So the next topic that we're going to talk about is on electrophoresis. Okay. So if we're going to look at the uh, learning objectives for this uh, module, it describes the principles of separation in uh, electrophoresis, and then explain the difference between capillary electrophoresis and slab uh, electrophoresis. The focus that we have is the uh, capillary electrophoresis, illustrate the instrumentation for capillary electrophoresis, and evaluate the applications of electro capillary electrophoresis in analysis of real samples. So in addition to the lecture that I'm going to discuss here, I want you to go to this uh, YouTube video, okay? So it tells you about the overview of the principles behind the separation in capillary electrophoresis. So if we're going to look at the electrophoresis, uh, that's usually a Greek word that means uh, to burn electrons, okay? So usually when we say electron and then poresis, so it's just to burn uh, what we call electrons. So here you have charge analytes that migrates in the presence of an electron field. Okay, so the separation here is based on the differential rates of migration. So this is a technique in which the solutes are separated by their different rates of travel through an electric field, okay? So if you're going to look at the history of electrophoresis, this is still much, uh, we could say, a century older than the chromatographic technique, okay? So electrophoresis principle uh, was known way back in 1807 uh, in Moscow University when Peter Ivanovich Strakov and Ferdinand uh, Frederick Rius okay, noticed that application of a constant electric field caused the, caused the clay particles dispersed in water to migrate. Okay? So during that time, they already see the principle behind it that if you have an electric field, you can uh, migrate or separate some of the uh, ions that you have there, okay? And the basis for analytical techniques that's used in chemistry is to separate molecules by size, charge, and binding affinity. So that's, we could say, uh, electrophoresis is all about. So if you're going to look at electrophoresis, it's commonly used in biological analysis, particularly in the separations of proteins, peptides, and nucleic acid. I would say the main uh, compounds of separations are the macromolecules, the big molecules, okay? And the way that it does is it applies a negative charge, okay? So that protein moves towards a positive charge. Similar to what we call chromatography because it involves separation, but there are different rates of what we call the travel through the system. So if you're going to look at the uh, electrophoresis, the different rates of travel are produced by an electro electric field, okay? Chromatography. So getting back. So the difference between electrophoresis and chromatography, electrophoresis usually, they have different rates of travel that are produced by an electric field. A chromatography, on the, other, on the other hand, they have different rates of travel due to the chemical interactions between the solutes and a, a stationary phase and a mobile phase. So we could say electrophoresis, in electrophoresis, the separation is carried out on a buffer field uh, capillary tube that is typically 10 to 100 a micro, uh, micrometer in internal diameter and 40 to 100 centimeter in length, okay? So to look at the difference between HPLC and capillary electrophoresis, I think we can look at the counterpart of the HPLC in capillary electrophoresis. So if we have retention time in uh, HPLC, uh, in capillary electrophoresis, we call it the migration time. If we have a mobile phase on the HPLC, which are the solvents that we have, in capillary electrophoresis, we have buffer solution. If we call 
the results chromatogram in HPLC in capillary electrophoresis, it's known as elect electroperogram uh, or egram. And the theoretical plates is still theoretical plates in uh, capillary electrophoresis. Now, the mobile phase flow that we have in HPLC, we call it the electroosmotic flow in capillary electrophoresis. Now, if we're going to look at the two forms of electrophoresis, we have uh, the so-called pack bed or slab electrophoresis. So this is the one that you do typically in an SDS page, okay? So here, the conducting buffer is retained within a porous gel of agarose or polyacrylamide. So in bi uh, biochemistry, you, you have an experiment like this one. So the way that you do it uh, here, you have this agarose or polyacrylamide, and then you're going to what we call put the samples that you have, you apply some uh, charge on this one, and that's where separations will take place. So the way that you look at the separations is you compare it with the marker. Okay, the marker is usually the one that we've known uh, molecular weight. So that's how you do the analysis here. Okay, and to, 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 to determine that the SDH page that I mentioned, I would just like you to look at this animation that tells you about this SDH page. Now, the one that we're going to focus is the so-called uh, capillary electrophoresis. So this is the open tubular electrophoresis. So if you're going to look at how it looks like, it's usually like this one. Okay, uh, this is in a simple term. In the instrument, usually the, the, the parts is not uh, what we call a beaker, as you see here. So what happened here, uh, the tube extends between two buffer reservoirs that also hold, uh, we could say, a platinum electrode. Okay, uh, you can see here some anode and cathodes. So the sample is going to be introduced. So you have a sample here, okay, into one end of the tubing and a direct current potential in the range of 10 to 30 kilovolt range is applied between the two electrodes throughout the separation. And the separated analyzes are usually observed by a detector. If you're going to look at it, there's a detector at the end of the capillary opposite the end where the sample is introduced. So you introduce it here, okay? You, you apply this, uh, what we call potential and they will separate, then the detector will be able to determine them. Okay? Or this is what we call separation that you have. Now, there are, we could say two theory of capillary electrophoresis, okay? So when an electric field is applied across the capillary tube, the sample's component migrate as a result of two types of action. It can be in terms of electrophoretic uh, mobility, okay, and electroosmotic mobility. So if we're going to look at these, uh, what we call two forms or two types of action, let's go with electrophoretic mobility. So electrophoretic mobility, uh, it's usually the transport of a charged solute in an electric field. Okay, so this is the solute that you have. So what happened there is there's what we call the transport in the electric field. So you have here a positive end and a negative end. Okay, so the way that you're going to do this is uh, the mobility is usually proportional to the Q over R ratio. Q is the charge of the ion or the solute, and R is the solute size. So what happened here, when an ion with a charge Q is placed in an electric field, the force of the ion is equals to QE, which is equals to Newton. Okay, so electric field times the charge. Now in solution, the retarding pro, uh, pro frictional force is, we could say, uh, F times BEP. So BEP is the velocity of the ion, and F is the friction coefficient. Uh, coefficient. 
So the iron quickly reaches a steady, steady speed when the accelerating force equals the frictional force. Okay, so here we could say the solute's electroporetic mobility is given by this equation. Uh, mu EP, so mu EP here is equals to Q divided by 6 pi and R. So Q is the solute's charge. N is the vapor viscosity and R is the solute's radius. So if you're going to look at the equations that's provided here, you could say that mu EP and we could say VEP, okay, the velocity of the ion increases for more highly charged solutes. So if the higher the Q, okay, the higher is the mu EP. So if the, the, the numerator increases, the uh, mu EP also increases, okay? and increases for more highly charged solutes and for solutes of smaller size. So if, if you're going to look at the smaller size, if R decreases, the mu EP also increases. So because Q is a positive for a cut ion and negative for an ion, these species migrate in opposite direction. Now in neutral species for which Q is zero, your electrophoretic velocity is zero. So this is just applicable if you have what we call the charge. Now, if you're going to look at the two equations that provides the mu EP and therefore the velocity of the ion, we could say it's directly proportional to the ion charge due to the driving force, inversely proportional to the ion size, okay, due to the friction of solvent. And we could also say that it is inversely proportional to the solvent viscosity because this is lower here. Okay. Now, how about the other, uh, what we call types of the action? So the other types of the action is what we call <clears throat> electroosmotic mobility. So in electroosmotic mobility, the mechanism is by which the entire run, okay, uh, buffer moves from the inlet to the outlet of the capillary. And solution is moved by an electric field. So we could say here in an electroosmotic uh, mobility, okay, everybody would say who moves from the inlet to the outlet of the capillary. So the electroosmotic uh, mobility, it is produced by the presence of the negative charge on the surface of the capillary. So we could say the solvated cations would be dragged Okay, so the sorbated cations should drag the water molecules during the migration. Hence, there is no, a net solution movement from the anode toward the cathode. Okay, so uh, as I said here, a movement from the inlet to the outlet, so move by electric field. So it is from the anode going to what we call the cathode. And the surface of the capillary, uh, silica capillary contains large numbers of the silanol groups. At the pH level greater than approximately two or three, the silanol groups ionize to form negatively charged silanate ions. Okay, so if you're going to look at this, these are the surface that you have here. So these are the buffer cut ion, the green one, and then you have the buffer and ion. So the net positive charge must exist in the solution to counter the negative charge of the capillary surface. So net positive. Uh, charge of solution causes net migration towards the negative electron. So here, all solutes eventually pass the detector regardless of the charge. Unlike in the other one, when you have a neutral one, what happens is it's not going to uh, what we call migrate. So if we're going to look at the type of the flow, so the LC uh, method usually is driven by the pressure dif uh, differential due to the pumping. So there's a pump that uh, pulls the solvent or your mobile phase to, pour, uh, to pass through the stationary phase. But in CE, you have an electroosmotic flow, okay? And with this electroosmotic flow, it's flat because there's no peak broadening, okay? So it's a pressure driven, uh, compared to the pressure driven flow in LC that has parabolic profile caused by the boundary effects and the inertia. Okay, so if you're going to look at 
the total mobility that you have here, so a total a solute's total velocity, which is B total, B T O T, as it moves through the capillary, is the sum of the electrophoretic mobility, which is BEP, and the electroosmotic flow velocity, which is BEOP. And B total is just equals to BEP plus BEOP. And if you're going to look at this, the <clears throat> total velocity of the cations is always higher than the electroosmotic flow velocity. And the total uh, velocity of the neutrals just equals to your uh, electroosmotic velocity. And the total uh, velocity of the anion is less than then BEOP. So if you're going to look at the order of elution, so the one that will elute first are the cation, and then the neutral, and the last one will be the anion. So the small highly charged cations should elute before the larger cations of lower charge. Now anions are the last components to elute. Sorry for that. So the So as we go again, okay, in the order of elution, cations will elute first, followed by the neutral, and then the anion. So if we're going to look at here, the anions are the last components to elute with smaller, highly charged ions having the longest elution time. Now, if we're going to look at the instrumentation of this, uh, what we call capillary electrophoresis, okay, so what you could see here. Usually it has a high voltage power supply. So that's the one that generates the electric field. And as you could see, there are two solvent reservoir here. This is usually the buffer. And then you have a capillary that connects the two. So you put the sample here, they start to migrate. So when they pass through the detector, the detector can determine the separation that is happening. Okay, so usually there's no pump for the mobile phase. So there's a 10 to 100 micron diameter and 30 to 100 centimeter length. So the high voltage applied across the capillary by the electrodes buffer solution of sample is injected into the capillary. I would suggest you watch the video here so you will know what is happening. Okay. And the good thing in what we call capillary electrophoresis, there's no stationary phase. Okay, so we could say there's no Van Dimter equation that we have. And that is good because that means there's no band broadening. Okay, so the multiple patterns eliminated by the open tubular uh, column, the mass transfer term is eliminated because there's no stationary phase. So everything is just on the B term. And as you could see here, Okay, the peak of the capillary electrophoresis is so sharp, and this is due to the high theoretical plates that they have compared to HPLC. So 92,000 compared to 4,100 uh, plates. So see the difference in the uh, what we call peaks. So the capillary electrophoresis routinely uh, produces 50,000 to 500,000 theoretical plates. So this is an order of magnitudes better. Uh, performance compared to chromatography. Okay, now for the detectors on this what we call capillary electrophoresis, you can have the same detectors as you have in chromatography and with the different uh, what we call detection limit. But as you could see, the detection limit that you have is much lower. Look at the unit that you have, atomol. Okay. So what is atomol? Anyone? Atom is what? What is atom? 10 to the what? Anyone familiar with uh, atom? Okay, atom, this is just a, a prefix. And usually this is 10 to the negative 18. So it's really so small. Okay. 
Now, the application of, we could say, capillary electrophoresis, as shown in the beginning, is using the macromolecules. In fact, the one that is used is DNA, RNA, and I think protein. Okay? Because of the extreme efficiency and narrow peaks produced by CE, it is an area of intense research. Biotechnology and biochemical separation is used here. Okay, the ionic solutes present in single cells, we can also use that. And then the screening of large chemical libraries for the drug discovery. Now, the genome was able to be sequenced because of the use of the capillary electrophoresis. In fact, capillary, capillary electrophoresis is more on uh, instrument, not in chemistry, but in uh, molecular biology. Okay, so I want you to look at the resources that you have here, okay? And the activities, I think part of this uh, discussion that we have will be in your quiz.